for the most wild, yet most homely narrative which I am about to convey, I neither expect nor solicit belief. Oh, well, man, indeed, would I be to expect it in a case where my very senses reflect their own evidence. Yet, yet, man, I am not, and very surely do I not dream. Uh, but tomorrow I die, and today I would unburden my soul. My immediate purpose is to place before the world plainly, succinctly, and without comment a series of mere household events. In their consequences, these events have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed me. Uh, from my infancy, I was noted for the docility and humanity of my disposition. I was especially fond of animals and was indulged by my parents with a great variety of pets. Oh, with these, I spent most of my time and was never as happy as when feeding and caressing them. I married early and was happy to find in my wife a disposition not uncongenial with my own. Having observed my partiality for domestic pets, she lost no opportunity in procuring those of the most agreeable kind. Oh, we had birds, goldfish, rabbits, a, a small monkey, a fine dog, and a cat. Now this latter was a remarkably large and beautiful animal, entirely black and sagacious to an astonishing degree. And speaking of his intelligence, my wife made frequent allusion to the ancient and, and popular notion which regarded all black cats as witches in disguise. <laughs> Well, well, not that she was ever serious upon this point, and I mention the matter for no better reason than that it happens just now to be remembered. Uh, Pluto, this was the cat's name, was my favorite pet and playmate. I alone fed him, and he attended me wherever I went about the house. Our friendship lasted in this manner for several years, during which my a general temperament and character, through the instrumentality of the fiend and temperance, experienced a radical alteration for the worse. I grew day by day more moody, more irritable, more regardless of the feelings of others, and at length Pluto, uh, who was now becoming old and consequently somewhat peevish, even Pluto began to experience the effects of my ill temper. Uh, one night, returning home from one of my haunts about town, I fancied that the cat avoided my presence. Well, I seized him, when in his fright at my violence, he inflicted a slight wound upon my hand with his teeth. Well, the, the fury of a demon instantly possessed me. I drew from my waistcoat pocket a penknife, opened it, grasped the poor beast by the throat, and deliberately cut one of its eyes from the socket. Now, when reason returned with the morning, I experienced a sentiment half of horror and half of remorse for the crime of which I had been guilty, uh, but my soul remained untouched. In the meantime, the cat slowly recovered. Oh, the socket of the lost eye presented a frightful appearance, but he no longer appeared to suffer any pain. Uh, he went about the house as usual, but fled in extreme terror at my approach. Now, I had so much of my old heart left as to be at first grieved by this evident dislike on the part of a creature which had once so loved me. Uh, but this feeling soon gave place to irritation, and then came the spirit of perverseness. Uh, now, it was this longing of the soul uh, to offer violence to its own nature, uh, to do wrong for wrong's sake only, which urged me to consummate the injury that I had afflicted upon the unoffending brute. One morning, in cold blood, I slipped a noose about its neck and hung it from the limb of a tree. Well, I uh, hung it with, with the tears streaming from my eyes and with the bitterest remorse in my heart. Uh, I hung it uh, because I knew that it had loved me. Uh, hung it because I knew that in doing so I was committing a deadly sin that would so jeopardize my immortal soul as to place it even beyond the reach of the infinite mercy of the most merciful and, and most uh, terrible God. 
Well, on the night of the day on which this cruel deed had been done, I was aroused from sleep by the cry of fire. While the curtains of my bed were in flames, the entire house was blazing. It was with great difficulty that we made our escape from the conflagration, but the destruction was complete. My entire worldly wealth was swallowed up, and I resigned myself thenceforward to despair. On the day after the fire, I visited the ruins. Now the walls, with one exception, had fallen in. Now this exception was found in a compartment wall against which had rested the head of my bed. Well, the plastering head here in great measure resisted the action of the fire. Well, a fact which I had attributed to its having recently been spread. But about this wall, a dense crowd had collected, and many persons seemed to be examining a particular portion of it with a, a very minute and eager attention. Well, I approached it and saw upon the white surface the figure of a gigantic cat. Well, the impression was given with an accuracy truly marvelous. There had been a rope about the animal's neck. Well, 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 for months the phantasm of the cat haunted me, and, and it was during this period there came back into my spirit a, a, a half-sentiment that seemed, but was not remorse. I even went so far as to regret the loss of the animal, and to look about me for a creature of the same species and of well, somewhat similar appearance with which to supply its place. Uh, one night, as I sat in one of my favorite haunts, my attention was suddenly drawn to some black object. Well, I approached it and, and touched it with my hand. It, it was a black cat, a large one, fully as large as Cato, and resembling him in every respect. Well, but one. Now, now, Pluto had not a single white hair upon any portion of his body, but this cat had a very large, well, although indefinite, splotch of white covering nearly the whole portion of the breast. Well, upon my touching him, he appeared delighted with my notice. Well, well this then was the very creature of which I had been in search. I at once offered to purchase it from the landlord, but this person made no claim to it. He knew nothing of it, had never even seen it before. Well, I continued my caresses, and, and when I prepared to go home, the animal even stayed disposition to accompany me. I permitted it to do so, and when we reached the house, it domesticated itself at once, and became immediately a great favor with my wife. Now, for my own part, however, I soon found a dislike to it arising within me. Well, this was just the reverse of what I had anticipated. But by slow degrees, these feelings of, well, of disgust and of annoyance rose into the bitterness of hatred. And, and what added to my hatred of the beast was the discovery on the morning after I brought it home well, that, like Pluto, it had also been deprived of one of its eyes. <laughs> and, and with my aversion to this cat, however, its partiality for myself seemed to increase. Whenever I sat, it would crouch beneath my chair or, or spring upon my knees, covering me with its loathsome caresses. If, if I arose to walk, it would get between my feet and thus nearly throw me down. Uh, my, my wife had called my attention to the character of the mark of white hair, which constituted the sole visible difference between this strange beast and the one I had destroyed. Oh, well, well, now remember that this mark, although large, had been originally very indefinite. Oh, but by slow degrees, degrees nearly imperceptible, it had obtained a, a rigorous distinctness of outline. It, it, it was now the representation of an object which I shudder to name. It was now the image of the gallows. 
<laughs> but alas, and neither by day nor by night knew I the blessing of rest any more. Well, well, during the former, the creature left me no moment alone, and in the latter I started hourly from dreams of unutterable fear to find well, the, the hot breath of the thing upon my face and, and its vast weight, an incarnate nightmare which I had no power to shake off, incumbent eternally upon my heart. <sighs> One day, my wife accompanied me upon some household errand into the cellar of the old building in which our, our poverty compelled us to inhabit. Well, the cat followed me down the steep stairs and, and nearly throwing me headlong, exasperated me into madness. Well, uplifting an axe, I aimed a blow at the creature, which of course would have proved instantly fatal had it descended as I wished. Well, but this blow was arrested by the hand of my wife. <laughs> well, well, goaded by the interference into a rage more than demoniacal, I withdrew my arm from her grasp and buried the axe in her brain. Uh, uh, she fell dead upon the spot <laughs> without a groan. Well, with the hideous murder accomplished, I set myself forthwith and with entire deliberation to the task of concealing the body. I had determined to wall it up in the cellar, and for a purpose such as this, this cellar was admirably adapted. And one of the walls was a projection that had been filled or, or walled up and made to resemble the rest of the cellar. Uh, now, I made no doubt that I could easily displace the bricks at this point, insert the corpse, and wall the hole up as before so that no eye could detect anything suspicious. And in this calculation, I was not deceived. Well, by means of a crowbar, I easily dislodged the bricks while having deposited the body against the inner wall, I dropped it in that position. Well, with little trouble, I relayed the whole structure as it had originally stood. My, my next task was to search for the creature which had been the cause of so much wretchedness, for I had at length firmly resolved to put it to death. Uh, had I been able to meet with it at that moment, there could have been no doubt of its fate. But it had appeared that the crafty animal had been alarmed at the violence of my previous anger. <laughs> Well, well, it is impossible to describe or to imagine the deep, the blissful sense of relief which the absence of the detested creature occasioned in my bosom. It did not make its appearance in that night, and thus for one night at least is its introduction into the house. I, 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 I soundly and tranquilly slept. I slept even with the burden of murder upon my soul. Well, the, the second and then the third day passed, and still my tormentor came not. The monster, in terror, had fled the premises forever. Well, I should be holding no more. My happiness was supreme. Uh, the, the guilt of my dark deed disturbed me but little. A uh, few inquiries had been instituted, but of course nothing was to be discovered. I looked upon my future felicity as secured. <clears throat> upon the fourth day of my assassination, a party of the police came and, and began again to make rigorous investigation of the premises. Well, well, secure, however, in the inscrutability of my concealment, I felt no embarrassment whatever. Oh, they left no nook or corner unexplored, and at length for the third or the fourth time they descended into the cellar. Oh, well, well, I quivered, not in a muscle. My heart beat calmly, as that of one who slumbers in innocence. Oh, well, the police were thoroughly satisfied and prepared to depart. Well, the glee at my heart was too strong to be restrained. I burned to say if but one word, by, well, by way of triumph, and to render doubly sure their assurance of my guiltlessness. 
Uh, gentlemen, I said as the party ascended the steps, I delight to have allayed your suspicion. Well, I wish you all health and a little more courtesy. <laughs> uh, uh, by the by, gentlemen, uh, this, this is a very well-constructed house. Well, I may say an excellently well-constructed house. Uh, these walls are solidly put together. <laughs> and, and here, uh, through the mere frenzy of bravado, I rapped heavily with a cane which I held in my hand upon that very portion of brickwork behind which stood the ghastly corpse of the wife of my bosom. But may God shield and deliver me from the fangs of the arch fiend. Well, well, no sooner had the reverberation of my blow sunk into silence than, than I was answered from a voice from within the tomb. My lightning cry, at first muffled and broken like the sobbing of a child, but, but then swelling into one long, loud, and continuous scream, utterly anomalous and inhuman, a, a howl, a wailing shriek, half of horror and half of triumph, one such as might have arisen only out of hell, conjointly from the throats of a damn in their agony, and from the demons that exult in their damnation. <coughs> <coughs> Of, of my own thoughts, it is folly to speak. While swooning, I staggered against the opposite wall. And for one instant, the party on the steps remained motionless through the extremity of terror and of awe. Uh, but in the next, a dozen stout arms were boiling at the wall. It fell bodily and the corpse, already greatly decayed and, and clotted with gore, stood erect before the eyes of the spectators. And, and upon her head, oh, with red, extended mouth and solitary eye of fire, sat the hideous beast whose craft had seduced me into murder, and whose informing voice had consigned me to the hangman. I had walled the monster up within a tomb! step up, so don't trip over that, but get right back in line, because about in 10 minutes we have the Raven coming on. If you haven't seen that yet, you gotta check it out. Thanks, guys.